Hello everyone, welcome to Ruckus. I'm so glad you're joining me for another part of our Knowing Jesus series. We've looked at questions about Jesus' nature, about why he had to die, about how all of our sins can be forgiven because he died. And we've looked at things about how, how we're saved, that it's th through, through grace and faith alone. And, and we've even looked at what words like justification, which means just as if you never sin, and sanctification, which is the process of looking more like Jesus as he works on you. We've looked at all these different things. And last time we looked at if we're saved by grace through faith, do we need to do good works? And we've said yes, and it's because we do it because we love God and, and because we want to make his name known in the world. Well, today we're going to answer another question, and that question is, since we're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, where does this faith actually come from? And to start things off, we're going to look at a passage found in the book of Titus. Titus chapter 3 verses 1 to 3 is where we're going to start. And just by way of introduction, Titus is written by Paul to a guy named Titus who was one of the leaders of a church. So Paul was writing to this leader to help him to understand the best way that he can lead the church in his area. And that's why it kind of starts off the way it does about telling people to remind, telling him to remind the people. Anyway, let's take a look at Titus chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. Titus 3, verse 1 to 3. Remind the people to be subject to the rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerable, and always to be gentle towards everyone. At one time we were too foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in a m malice of envy, being hated and hating one another. So to start things off, Paul is writing to Titus to remind him, to remind the people uh, to do good things, to, to act in a certain way that is honoring to God. Now, this is something that we talked about last time and we've talked about on Friday nights as well as on Sunday mornings. And, and it's essentially to look different from the world around us. And it says to basically be kind and good to all people, not just to Christians, but to all people. And then it has that little switch where it says, for we were once like this. We were once foolish. We were once doing these other things because before we come to Christ, we are the ones who are like the people of the world. And so we're to look different because when we look different, when we act different, we, we have an ability to point people towards why we're different. And so Paul gives a reminder that the people of God are supposed to behave in a certain way. Now that's just really a recap of what we talked about last time, where we're saved by grace through faith, but we still do good works because we want to honor God, because we love Him, and we want more people to come to know Him. So we, it's a way for us to point people to Jesus. And that's essentially what's going on here. But this next part is when Paul gets into a, a little bit more of a teaching about where this faith comes from and even where the ability to truly be be different comes from and it's not just from our own selves it comes from God so let's take a look at Titus chapter 3 verses 4 to 7 Titus 3 verse 4 to 7 but when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of the right, of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of his own rebirth and renew of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus as Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become Harris having the hope of eternal life. So right away in this second half, Paul says that, that our salvation, our faith, does not come from any good thing that we do. It's not something that we worked so hard to get. It comes from the washing and the renewal, regeneration of the Holy Spirit. It comes from the Holy Spirit at work in us, which Christ poured out on us and gave us the faith in Christ. So to simplify this question, since we're saved by grace through faith 
where does our faith come from? Our faith comes from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals the truth of God to us and and gives us the faith to trust in God. Gives us the faith to trust in God. And that's what faith is, which we've already talked about as well. So it comes from the Holy Spirit, which is also where sanctification comes from, which is the process of starting to look more like Jesus, to sin less and less as we grow in faith. So faith is a gift of God. It's not something that we've earned. It's not something that we do and, and, and keep on working at. And, and if you find yourself continuing to work at being faithful, what you're going to find is that you're going to get exhausted. We need to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit at work in us. That doesn't mean that we don't make an effort to study the Word of God or pray or, or, or practice doing good things. It just means that the true saving faith, that trust in Jesus, is not something that we're able to do on our own. It's something that comes from God. It's a gift from Him that we embrace through trust that is revealed to us through the Holy Spirit. Now that can sound really crazy and difficult and, and complicated, but essentially what it means is this. When, when we hear about Jesus, whether it's when we're uh, five years old or 50 years old or anywhere in between or beyond, and the Holy Spirit gives us that, I want to turn to Jesus moment, that's the Holy Spirit that gives us the ability to turn to Jesus and trust in him. Uh, C.S. Lewis, who wrote the Chronicles of Narnia, among many other books, says in his autobiography, when he became a Christian, he felt like he made a choice. He says, I distinctly remember making a choice that I was now going to follow Jesus. However, he goes on to say, whether or not I could have chosen otherwise is a completely different matter. And all he's saying is, is he's, he's saying the Holy Spirit changed his heart. And, and, and that is the process. That's where faith comes from. So our faith comes from the Holy Spirit, and it doesn't mean that we don't still seek to do good works and seek to spend time in the Word and seek to understand Him more on our own, but we do it in partnership with Him, and He is always with us wherever we go. And that's what makes us, as the end of this passage says, heirs of eternal life, that we get to inherit eternal life because the Holy Spirit has transformed us through washing, regeneration, and renewal. Okay, everyone, I hope that helps you. And over the next little bit, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Holy Spirit. So this, if you're just already getting to a point where you're like, what exactly do we need to know about the Holy Spirit, which can be kind of mysterious for us, we're actually going to start talking about that starting next time. All right, everyone, I'll see you then.